From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. As the sun sets and the darkness falls in Trinidad and Tobago, the world's largest sea turtles, the leatherback, haul themselves out of the sea and up the sand to lay their eggs. Here, dedicated local people are now combining efforts and local resources to protect this once endangered species. Turtles were being killed in large numbers in Trinidad. I would see sometimes just a flipper missing or a few pounds of shoulder meat. And I said, you know, I'm going to do something about that. For the past 26 years, Suzanne Lacan and other community members have been doing all they can to protect the turtles, uh, we have a turtle at the end of the including patrolling the beaches at night to make sure they are safe from poachers. But protection comes also from a surprising source. The forest is really a huge deterrent for people coming in into that area because it's a vast area where the forest is separating the community and the beach. It keeps away so much illegal activities. The coastal forest forms a natural barrier, protecting the nesting turtle and her eggs. But the forest also has an important and unique role as a navigation aid for the turtles. All turtles are extremely sensitive to light and will only nest where it is dark. At night, Forest from a dark line along the shore, a much darker mass than the moonlit sea to a turtle. But with encroaching development in coastal areas, particularly in small islands like these, lights on land at night can disorient a turtle. Nesting patterns around the world have been seriously impacted. At Matura Beach, Suzanne and her colleagues know just how vital the forests are for turtle survival. But like many small island communities, finding the funds to pay for forest upkeep was a problem. So Suzanne came up with an innovative scheme of controlled tourism, which not only preserves the turtles, but also the forest. So this has generated eco-tours that visitors will pay to see the turtles. So we were able to tally and to show how much revenue is being generated as a result of this turtle coming alive each time on the beach to nest. In 2013, enough money was earned from these tours, not only to provide jobs to more than a dozen local guides, but also to contribute to the maintenance of the coastal forests so vital for the turtles' survival. This combined effort has been heralded by the United Nations Forum on Forests, or UNFF. Not only is this a prime example of how a small community is financing and sustaining both its ecosystems and livelihoods, but it can also be replicated by other developing countries, says Benjamin Singer of UNFF. It's one of the few examples where local people themselves are raising the funds through turtle conservation and then reallocating these funds to maintaining their own forests. That's what makes it so interesting. The success of the venture is apparent. More than 13,000 visitors came to see the turtles on Matura Beach in 2013. Now this community doesn't have to depend on international aid for its efforts to protect both forests and turtles. Thanks to these contributions to finance the protection of both forest and marine ecosystems, these turtle hatchlings now make the hazardous journey out to the open sea. They still face many perils, but they are the next generation of this unique sea creature. We just need to do whatever it takes to ensure that this species remains so we can continue to enjoy them.
This report was produced by Jill Fickling for the United Nations.